anybody who does not know, Tessenar is a coaching company that focuses on helping students and other working professionals achieve the next level of their career and educational pursuit. I would say that our vision is to be the plug that connects young professionals and students all around the world to always be ready for their next career academic acceleration opportunity. This is because um, for most people, they are never ready for the opportunities that they get. And a lot of times you only get your opportunity once, sometimes just once. A few people are lucky to get opportunities twice or thrice. But a lot of the times people have the opportunity once. If you don't make good use of that one time you have the opportunity, then you might end up regretting a lot of things in life. And once those opportunities don't come back, you've lost them for life. Our focus is to make sure that you don't lose the opportunities, that you are actually ready to take advantage of those opportunities when you do get them, right? And our mission is, how do we help you? We want to help you tell your stories. We want to help you identify the opportunities, how to connect with people, how to connect your past, your future. And for our values, one main thing about values resilience, right? You cannot really succeed and excel without being very resilient because failure is not the end of the world. It's actually a stepping stone to success. You would always fail. There will always be times where you would fail, right? Like professionally, personally, but how are you able to be self-reflective to understand what, why you failed, the things that you can do to improve yourself and how you can move on going forward. Now, our services, we have our career services, we have our admission services. For career services, we work on like helping individuals, like transitioning work experience, like inter individual coaching. We have like international job seeker coaching. We have our Head Start programs for incoming graduate school students. And then we have other one-on-one uh, -on -one behavioral interview resume cover letter coaching. And for admission, we have our one-on-one -on -one admission coaching that covers from school selection, initial school conversation, networking coaching, resume, essays, recommendation letter, MBA admission interview prep, all to scholarship evaluation and negotiation. And then we also have our admissions course and we have our blended services. This slide shows a few of the schools that our clients have gotten admission offers at, at Daddy, in Ohio, Talk, Duke, and the companies that our clients have gotten um, offers at Amazon, Microsoft, MX, Apple, McKinsey, EYP, and so on. This is just a few. Now, um, just to kind of iterate, Tetanar offers one-on-one -on -one admissions co coaching process. We actually also offer an admissions course to help you. Do, it's a do-it-yourself course to help you every step of the way. So if you are the kind of person that, oh, you don't want the one-on-one -on -one admissions coaching, it's too expensive, and um, you don't believe that you can actually make that kind of time because a lot of times people have like one month and they are trying to wrap up their uh, MBA admission process and position themselves for success, right? If you have just that short period, right, what do you do? Which is where the MBA admissions course comes in. It's a course of more than eight hours of everything that you need to know from your... Um, identifying your school school selection to actually your scholarship negotiations. Then um, our clients, a lot of our clients do get full rides into schools and most of our clients get between 50 to 100% with the schools that um, they apply to. And for our clients that had the Career Head Start program, 70% of them actually did get interviews before starting school this fall. And a couple, I think more than 50% of them actually already have um, offers, um, yeah. Some of them did have the offers before they even got on campus. So this is a testament to the work that we do and how we are living our vision and our mission. One thing that does stand out from all of these successful clients is they're people that are very dedicated to be very successful. They're people that want to be successful. They're people that push themselves beyond the limit, right? Knowing that this is what they need to excel and putting in all of the work to excel. I would always say Titanal Consulting is a school, right? If you're somebody that you believe things should be done for you and you don't want to put in any work, it's going to be very hard because our coaches put in a whole lot of effort and we expect people to also put in that amount of effort. That's the only way we can have synergy and have success. So if you have any questions at any time, please type your questions in the chat box if you have any questions at any time. Now, the MBA program, right? The MBA is the Master of Business Administration. I know a lot of you know what the MBA program is at this point. Like, nobody is new to the MBA program. Everybody knows what it is. But how 
where did the entire oh let, let's go for an mba let's go for an mba how did it and how did it start well a lot of people people have been going for mbas since 19 1900s people have been going for mbas right um the mba program has become a i would say not just suitable of but a very attractive um graduate program for especially for international students people that are coming to business school because a lot of these um other programs do not offer the, the kind of breadth of information especially information across different facets of business that many um that the mba program offers right with the mba program like when i talk to people and they're saying oh i want to major i want to do mba in something the entire goal of an mba program is it's not in something it's just an mba master of business administration that's just what is going to be on your diploma or your certificate or anything you call it and the mba program provides you an opportunity to understand things across operations business finance strategy data analytics um, healthcare analytics professional services um communication name it every facet of business that you've ever imagined the mba is going to help you understand business from that or understand understand business from all of the different facets right so if you're somebody who you know that you want to be better you want to improve yourself you want to give yourself a better career advantage better career you want to give yourself better career opportunities but you don't know how to do it i think the mba is actually a very good place because you're able to try several things and then you're able to now pick what you eventually like and the good thing is you don't even have to pick what you eventually like a lot of us don't eventually like anything right we like many things and that's the beauty you can like many things at the same time you don't have to have a concentration for most of the programs i know some programs say oh well for you to graduate you need to concentrate in something but most programs are actually moving away from that you don't really have to concentrate in anything for most of these programs right now so you can do a little bit of marketing a little bit of finance a little bit of operations you can do a little bit of everything everywhere right so you don't have to always always all the time say oh i want to do finance i want to do business i want to do analytics now something else also is when it comes to like job prospects the mba program is really 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 great for a graduate degree job prospect that's because for you to even be admitted to an mba program you need to have professional work experience um professional work experience meaning you have between three to seven years work experience that's what i would always advise as an international student i don't advise if you have less than three and when i mean three years i mean three years of experience post undergrad right everything that you have done after undergrad three years of experience post undergrad so you need to have three years of experience post undergrad so i know that for some people that are nigerians um they do some form of um i don't know community program what's it called military program and it's very discounted but it's not right it's actually proper work experience and this is where if you are presently doing that program you should look for opportunities to actually do it really well and really excel so when you're counting your work experience you're counting it from there and then when you're also counting your work experience you're counting your work experience from um not just from there but also from the work experience that you would have before graduating so uh, before you resume so if you are resuming in june 2024 for example july 2024 and currently you have like two years and two months or two years and three year, months of work experience by the time you will be starting school you would have the three years of work experience so you are not counting it as the work experience that you have as at now it's the work experience that you have as at when you resume so you need to consider those right and when it comes to like the amount of money you get paid the average mba salary is a lot of money um well compared to like the other traditional master's programs so especially if you have good work experience it's always great that the mba is a good option now there are a few people that are actually say oh no i want to do a master's in something that they really determined they want to do a master's in something that's not bad if that's what you want to do but you just need to know that the mba also is a path for you now i already gave a little bit about like what the MBA program is and um, how it's focused a lot more professional business development. So now one thing that you need to know, and I'm going to go through this before we re really go through how you would stand out is there are diversities of opinions and ideas. And those the diversities of the opinions and ideas are things that are very valued in the MBA program. 
So before you before before you think you're not a good fit for the program, <laughs> you need to know that you are actually you that you think you're not a good fit. You are actually a good fit because a lot of times people say, oh. They don't think they're a good fit for the program because they don't have traditional work experience. That means they didn't work in like accounting firms, they didn't work in banks, they don't have like business experience. But the fact that you don't have a business experience is what intrigues the admissions team, right? Every school has a profile, right? And they have their profile based off of like the experience of the people coming in, their undergraduate GPA, their test score their years of experience, their type of experience, their undergraduate program, the kind of work experience that they have, all of these things are put into con consideration. And this com these schools really want to have diverse people in their programs. Because they want to have diverse people in their programs, it's very, very important that irrespective of where your background is, so far you actually did have, you had a college degree, right? You are eligible for the program. Now, it's how you can tell your story talking about why you want to have the MBA is now what you would do differently from other people. But once you get into your MBA program, you're going to see people that never, ever worked a day in your life, complete entrepreneurs. You're going to see people that studied music. You're going to see people that were music teachers, right? That's how much diversity of opinions and ideas that you're going to get in the program. Now, we spoke about the range of the um, MBA program. And the reason I'm talking about the range is for you to do a proper self-assessment, you need to know what your range, how you fall in between the range of the MBA program. You really need to know, right? So what's the undergraduate GPA range? What's the average age of enrollment, the average work experience, the average GMAT or GRE of the schools that you are interested in? And then you put yourself and say, where do I fall in between these averages? That helps you stay competitive your goal is to make sure that you are the upper band of every range for the schools that you're applying to. Your goal is to make sure that you are the upper band. Now, some of these ranges are just like quantitative ranges, right? There are other things that they consider in their profile evaluation of understanding if you're, good, if you're going to be a good fit, like your story, your resume, your recommendation letter, all of those things are being considered. But at least for these ones, you need to make sure that you are the upper band. Now, there are some times where there's nothing you can do. Like you're already old. For example, you are more than the average age. There's nothing you can do. Now, if you're more than the average age, then you need to now start thinking. You need to start considering. Now I'm more than the average age. What exactly do I do to make sure that I prove to them that I am a good fit for the program? Because for a lot of people that are old or have like significant work experience, these programs try to push the executive MBA. So you need to talk about why exactly am I a good fit for the full time? And then why exactly am I having my MBA at this time? So for every part of the profile where you fall short of, you need to give a proper explanation. And then you need to also not just give an explanation of, oh, well, this is the reason why I'm older, but you need to talk about the things that you have done in that time. Because if you're, if you're going to be significantly older than the rest of the class, what kind of value, what kind of experience are you bringing that is significantly better than that of the class? If you have a low undergraduate GPA, for example, and you're saying, oh, this is my undergraduate GPA, you're not just going to talk about how, oh, well, something happened to me as a child. Like a lot of people talk about that. You need to say, what exactly do I have right now? How have I performed so fast that I graduated from undergrad to prove that I have the quantitative capabilities to excel in the program? Because what they want to test is your quantitative abilities. That's what they want to test, right? That's why they're asking you, oh, what did you score on your undergraduate degree? So what have you done? Your GRE cannot be the only thing that you have done that improves or makes your quantitative experience better, right? So you need to talk a lot about that. So those are the things that you evaluate. Now, this slide is something that I've shared over and over again, and I will walk, it, I will walk you through it a little bit before going into the main slide of the things that you should consider to enable you stand out, and then we'll get our questions, and then we can close out. Now, the things that you consider, the schools consider several things, right? These are just a few of the things that you consider, like your scores, your undergraduate GPA, your years of experience, your type of experience. So it's not just about your years, your type of experience. Have you taken up leadership opportunities? Now, leadership opportunities are, a lot of times people misunderstand what it means. It doesn't necessarily mean you need to have led a team in the sense of you actually are a team lead or you are a manager. You need to just showcase that you have taken initiative to work on projects and to do things without being told. 
So what are the competencies necessary or needed for you to excel as a leader, right? You need to be able to talk about those things. So those are the type of work experiences that you're asking for because a good indicator of your, of your success in the MBA program is how, how much you have showcased leadership skills before getting into the program. And then your resume, of course. They want to see that your resume actually looks like somebody that is prepared to excel in the MBA program. The MBA program is really competitive. Even when you get in to get a job, it's really competitive. So if your resume doesn't even show that you are even ready to be job market competitive, that might count against you. You have your portfolio. Now, portfolio is half and half, right? It's a lot about... Most of the times, it's people that are doing other traditional master's program or PhDs that talk about portfolio. But for you, as a an MBA candidate, you can actually do talk about portfolio depending on the kind of work that you have done. If you if you're like a software developer or you have like a marketing agency and you have done things like all the things that you have done, look at it as your portfolio of experiences. Don't look at it as the manual term portfolio, like it has to be like technical. No, it's just things that you have done, right? How you have stood out. Those are the things that they are looking for. Then like volunteer experiences and passion. You cannot apply for the MBA program and say you have zero volunteering. Experience. Like it's not possible. They want people that have been able to pay it forward. Those are the kind of people that they want. People that they are able to pay it forward, right? And then you now have career prospects. So they want to see what are your career prospects? Have you been able to think through why you actually want to have an MBA? What the MBA will do for you? How you are so distinct is very important. Then your essays, of course, your letters of recommendation, what your bosses write about you, your admissions interview, and finally, your communication and interactions with the school. So a lot of times people just feel, well, I will just submit my essays, recommendation, resume, and then that's it. Well, if you haven't considered all of these things in total, well, you might, that might be the reason why you're not even getting like a callback or getting an interview because you have a whole lot around your application that is lacking. Now, we'll go into quickly how to actually stand out in round two because you all are not new to the entire MBA program, the entire MBA phase, and you're thinking through, how do you stand out now the reality is round one round two is very very competitive you have the best of the best people i mean you have the best of the best people in every application but round two has a whole lot more and this is because most people take time to write their exams and then they have their exams written by round two and round two is also competitive because a lot of schools have taken good candidates in round one so if the schools are taking very, very good candidates in round one, they don't have a lot of space for round two. The things that you could have led, that you could have gone easy on, like maybe networking, for example, you cannot go easy on networking in round two. If not, you're not even going to get a shot at all, like zero shots. So if you really, really, really do want to stand a chance, you need to start networking right now. And networking is speaking to adcom, speaking with current students, speaking with alums, and also um, at webinars. I'm sure you're wondering, well, speaking with these students and adcom, maybe he doesn't do anything. This is where you might be mistaken. One, some of those students actually do have a say as to your admission decision. So when I mean they have a say, not that they detect it, but they can influence it. Influencing in a way that if they actually let the admissions committee know that, well, I want to advocate for Daniel, for example, and I think Daniel is a great fit, that would be a good consideration in how they make their decision because they trust and they value the opinions of their current students. And if their current student is able to evaluate and see that this person is a good talent, that's great. Now, apart from them being able to vouch for you, right, or validate you, speaking to them helps you gain context about the school deeper context that you could not that you can't see anywhere and when you are writing your essay stories you are writing your essay stories in line with that context in line with the context that's how you are writing your essays right you're writing it in line exactly in line with the context so you need to understand that 
when you're doing a lot of your networking, it should not just be, oh, I'm networking because I want to get into this school. I'm networking because I want somebody to give me an interview. You are also networking because you want to get enough context about the school, right? Um, and about the program to even see if it's a good fit for you. And even after you submit your application, like you're done, you've submitted your application, you still must continue to network. And it's if, if it sounds like, oh, why would I continue? Say, your webinars, the reality about your webinars is these people know the people that attend their webinars. They know the people that ask questions in their webinars. They know the people that show their videos in their webinars. I know nobody is showing video here, but when you're having network, networking like webinars with like Adcom, current students, alums, or any networking event, please turn on your camera. It's very, very important, right? Turning on your camera helps them put a name and a face to you. And at the end of the day, the reality is we are all biased, right? And you want people to be positively biased towards you. And a good way to do that is for them to actually see your face. They remember you. It's logic, right? They know that, oh, this is Mary. Mary comes on video every time. Mary asks question every time. Mary, we know who Mary is. We have seen Mary. She's always in our face. Mary stands a higher chance of getting an, an um, interview um, request than somebody that just comes and doesn't say anything. So if you actually do want to stand out, I advise between now and even after your deadline in January, I want you to apply for all of the webinars, events that are available for the schools that you are interested in. All. If it is one webinar every week, go there, ask questions. And please don't ask questions that are just very obvious on their website, right? You ask them questions about like career, not just say, oh, what are the career opportunities available? First of all, nobody can answer that kind of question because what do you mean? What are the career opportunities available? That's a very vague question. You need to ask and say things like, oh, you are somebody that likes to prepare way ahead um, of time. And you've heard a lot about like pre MB opportunities, for example. Um, does the school have any pre MBA booth camp that they can attend to make them ready ahead? And then you talk about like, oh, case competitions. So you heard a lot about case competitions. There's something that you're going to be you're very interested in. You know, some of these case competitions, they are restricted to like Americans and green card holders and residents. There are, are there case competitions that as an international student that you can participate in, right? Do they do a lot of case competitions across schools? Right. And you can talk about, oh, how do they even advise you on if you get admitted? How do they advise you on getting prepared for the workforce, like communicating with like the alums and second years? Right. You can ask, oh, do they advise that you do more interviews with like second years or your peers or with the career services team? You need to start asking questions like you're already in the school, not questions like, oh, do you have any do you have scholarship? Don't ask that kind of question. First of all, it puts them up. Imagine if, oh, Tadena is doing something and you know that maybe we give scholarship for something and then you just come and say, oh, will you give me scholarship? I will not want to give you because you are not, like your, your, your purpose for coming to meet me is not really genuine, right? Only a lot of the scholarship information, I can tell you that for one, almost every school has some form of scholarship or not, right? Almost all, they do. And they evaluate your scholarship um chance based off of the profile of the people that are applying in your round your goal is to stand out and make sure that you apply on time apply early put in a great application so coming to ask them oh do they have scholarship could not might not turn out really well it might form like a bias that you don't want them to form about you you get so those the questions that you ask have to be smart questions have to be intelligent questions they have to be questions that once they are done, they remember you. And once again, make sure that you're, you're turning on your video when you're talking to these people. Now, let your story be distinct. I started with networking because there is no way around it. If you want to get something in round two, you must network. You have to. Then let your story be distinct. Your story must have a problem-solving focus. There must be a problem you're trying to solve. If you're not solving any problem and you're just talking about some generic story, that's not going to work out for you in round two. Your story must be distinct. 
Now, if you have a traditional experience, you need to put a spin on it. So when I mean traditional experience, so if you're somebody that, oh, you've worked in a bank, you've worked in an accounting firm, you had a chartered accountant, you have CFA, you studied business administration, you worked in marketing. Some of those experiences are traditional experiences of people that are coming from West Africa. You know that these schools are evaluating their profiles based off of like locations also. Now, if that is your background, you are coming from West Africa, that's your background, and you are coming into the program, you are applying to the program, consider it, if a lot of these people already, um, a lot, they already admitted a lot of people that look exactly like you. When I mean look exactly like you, they are from West Africa, they worked in your bank, or they worked in your accounting firm, or they've done something business related. They don't want to take somebody that is exactly like that because they want their class to be very diverse. Even their class from West Africa, they want you to be very diverse. Now, you must put a spin on it, meaning you need to talk about how finance affects some other industry. So your problem shouldn't be too finance focused only. Your problem needs to have some other important spin that is not just basic core finance. If it's only that, it reduces your chances, especially if you are older. And that's your profile, because that's the profile of the average person coming into the program. So your experience must have a spin on it. If you have like maybe a nursing experience or medicine experience or something like that, it's, I would say it's easier around two. That's the, that's the truth. It is actually easier around two. I won't say easier, but easier than somebody that has a traditional accounting background. Because you know a lot of people that are doctors that are coming for MBAs compared to accountants. Now, volunteering experience, if you actually say you did not volunteer, you are not actively volunteering, that means you are not putting it forward. There is no guarantee that the school has that, oh, when they give you this opportunity to be an alum of their school, you actually pay it forward to other students. And they don't want people that will not pay it forward. They want people that actively would pay it forward. They want people that want to contribute to their community, their society. They want it. Then you must show quantitative aptitude and readiness irrespective of if your background is in humanities or in art or in history yes you don't have traditional experience that's fantastic but you must also show quality quantitative aptitude and readiness is this from your nagwadi gpa is this from like some certifications or courses that you did is this from your gra your gmat you need to show that quantitative aptitude and readiness right go ahead and show it because if you don't show it you're not going to stand out then your interview is not ne negotiable a lot of people, they get their interview and their interview is the one that pulls them out. And sometimes people say, oh, my interview was nice. So my, my interviewer was smiling. First, what do you want the interviewer to do? Frown? The interviewer cannot frown. Like even if you are saying something that is not right, if you are talking, if you are just rambling, your interviewer would smile because there is no other choice. They have to be polite. They have to smile. So you need to know that that's, that's what it is. Does not mean your interview is good. Now you need to ace your interview. You need to use the staff framework. You need to make sure that your actions are hitting the nail on the head. You need to make sure that you have quantifiable result. You need to make sure that the competencies that they want to test in your interviews are being tested. And then finally, yes, you have to January to submit your application, but you can submit it at the end of December. Submit your applications early enough. The reason why I say that is for a lot of schools, some schools they do um, round one, round two, but a lot of schools actually do rolling. They won't tell you, but they do rolling admission. So if you submit your own in mid-December, higher chances of you getting an interview. That's just the reality. So except if you have not finished your application, I mean, there's no point submitting like a rushed application if you haven't finished your application yes but if you are actually done please just go ahead and submit it's very important that you do that so those are like the main things that you need to consider when you are actually applying your round to now if you want to get we have a free ebook and this um, form also allows you sign up for our mba admit course right so if you are interested in learning about the mba admit course please um Titan Our services will be including the link the bitly link in the chat go ahead to 
uh, fill the bit.ly ebook form you will get the ebook and you would also be getting details about the mba admit um admissions course now this brings us to the end of our session today i know that i've spoken a whole lot and you guys have been amazing listening to me so i would like you guys to ask questions any question there are no stupid questions just let me know what questions that you have and i'll be listening So nobody has any questions. Everybody knows what they want about the MBA program. Everybody's fine. Donald, you're good. Oloa, Femi, you're good. You have all of your questions answered. Yeah, so I didn't have to raise my hand, um, but thank you so much. So my question really is, um, how would your advice want to proceed with the application if you feel that you have um, other things you've done, say you've written ACCA, I did some exams mm -hmm. in ACC and you did well in your undergrad, but maybe mm -hmm. because of time and work um, obligations, you're not able to just get that score that you want in GRE, but you want to go ahead with your application. So how would your advice want to proceed? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are you able to share your test score, like the range that you have been getting your GRE? Yeah, so it's been in the range of 300 cumulatively, say 150, 149. 149, okay. 150. Yeah, okay, and you and, have your, I mean, do you have the ACCA complete? No, okay. right? So, I mean, if it was complete, then you know, I'll say, Oh, yes, you have bragging rights, but this one it's not complete, and then you the GRE is just the edict. <laughs> Okay. But you know you can do this thing. <laughs> okay. What yeah. was your undergraduate GPA? Uh, four point two nine. Four point two nine. Okay. So, what kind yeah. of work experience have you had? Um. Well, I started in a big four. I'm now in okay. IT. Yeah. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. So, first, I understand how you feel about the GRE. And you say you're always getting in um, around the 300. So the reality is, the truth is, for the average African, our, the way we have been taught, we're not taught necessarily a lot with those test-taking skills for like the GRE or the GMAT. Your score around 300 is actually a realistic average score for the average person. Now you have 4.29, which is not bad. How many years of experience do you have? Four years? Four, five. Four to five. Now. Four, five. That's great, right? So four, five is really, really good. Now, I would advise you that push and put in a little bit more work for the GRE. Cross, try to get above your 300. The reason why I'm saying this is in the last two, three years, I, th I think two years, the, rea the truth is a lot of people from West Africa have been coming up with test scores that are not real. That's the truth. That's the reality. Now, in, two years ago, that was very, very new. And people were, they were like, schools were very excited or flustered. They didn't know what to do with those scores. I can tell you for free now, that the schools know who has a fake score and who has a real score because they can tell. Based off of your profile, you have worked in a big four. You have 4.29 GPA. Your scoring above 300 is actually good. Yes, for you, even if you score 320, it still, it still aligns. But I don't think you're going to be in a bad spot. You just have to take the exam. The truth is, if you go ahead and not take the exam, you don't know the opportunities that you're going to miss out on. I personally know people that have gotten 300 and 301 in the last I could have got full right. So it's not impossible. You just need to take the score, take the test, and get above that. That helps you stand out. Most people getting interviews now are not people that got the 330-something. 
they're not even getting any interviews because the schools the schools think there's something wrong with those scores so your score is actually more realistic so put in as much work as you want to put in for the next one to three weeks and yes you would also be doing everything you want with like your resume your networking be doing everything so that when you take your exam you submit everything at the same time so your chances are not slim if you ask me they are not i mean you're going to have a range of schools you're going to have like safety schools you're going to have targets you're going to have rich schools and you're going to be very um will i call it realistic with the schools that you're selecting but i don't think you have a bad chance i actually think that you're you're in a good place um yeah you just have to push all right thank you thank yeah. you so much and let's know let me know if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one with me katana services can you include the link of our one-on-one -on -one in the chat box so that femi can schedule the one-on-one -on -one if she wants okay i have a question please mary okay yes yes okay so um in the part of the recommendation letter does you have to do immediate bus because um the bus i work with currently doesn't believe in all this um going outside the country to get mba so I'm sure the moment I would tell him about this recommendation, it's probably working my track letter somewhere else. So is there a way to get the recommendation later? Maybe from our past employer. Okay. Yes. So the reality is it's 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 sad that in the in the environment that we're in, we don't have managers that are very, very supportive of like our ambitions and our goals. And yes, you have to be very protective of your protective of your goals and your dreams. I get that. So you can use somebody in your former office and you can use somebody in your in your current office okay. so the person that you're in your current office doesn't necessarily have to be your manager it will be best for the person to be your manager but the person does not have to be because this is the situation of what it is right now okay so maybe the former person can be a former supervisor and this person can be like a peer or something or the person can be a, a supervisor but maybe not your direct supervisor okay yeah okay i think that's answer. thank you okay all right yeah victor you said um if we do need to network a lot because it's round two which matters most alumni student ambassador so student ambassadors and um the outcome are very important webinars are very very important you know all of these webinars where you sign up and they say oh virtual info session where they're just like four or five students that show up with adcom those are very very important sessions for you to attend and then putting on your video asking questions letting them know who you are then after every like session letting the person know that oh can i connect with you on linkedin so taking it beyond just you are connecting with them and then connecting with them on linkedin connecting with them via email say oh thank you so much for the session that you had oh i really learned a lot that amount of pushing is important now for alums it depends on the school there are some schools that the alums are really very 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 key in the admissions process i know that there are some alums that are very key in some schools to the admissions process there are schools that alums are not really in the admissions process now the kind of information that you'll be getting from those alums are more information about like how you can be a good fit how you can stand out the things that you can do to help you improve your chances of getting in not that they actually do have a say right the outcomes are the people that you actually need to convince a whole lot so i would say more webinars more outcome conversations like letting them see you right and getting them to be updated keeping them updated of your progress at every point in time yes Um, um, Donald, Sandra, Deborah, any questions? No, I'm good. Okay. We're good. Okay. All right. Okay. Awesome. Okay, awesome. So, um, finally, we would be having a Titan R meet and greet next week, Sunday, um, between 2 p.m. to 4 p.m nigerian time i would actually be attending so i will be home if you want to attend our meet and greet um titan our services will be including the link to register for the meet and greet session so just um, register and then we can get to have pizza and snacks and drinks on 
Sunday and I can talk to you about my experience. Bring whatever challenge that you have, your resume, recommendation, just bring and I'll be happy to answer any question that you have within those two to two and a half hours that we'll be spending together. So if it's something that you are interested in, please sign up for our Meet and Greet. Um, Tatiana Services, please can you include the link to the Meet and Greet so that uh, we can have our team here, our people here to sign up. I don't know if you guys would be interested in coming to, um, I don't know, see me on Sunday, next week Sunday. That would be uh, really nice to see all of your beautiful faces. Yeah. Yes, Donald, the recording is going to be available and it will be sent to you via email by tomorrow. So you have the recording available. And if you have any questions any point in, at any point in time, just send an email to me. I'm happy to answer your questions. If I don't answer within 24, 48 hours, send a reminder. You are not bothering me. Just send a reminder, right? And um, it's important that you start now. I know it's overwhelming. And for some of us, you're like, oh, God, it's very hard. Just start now and take it one step at a time. That's all. So if you have, we, we have eight, eight weeks right now to the end of two round two up deadlines, we can still make it. You can still make it. So you just need to identify what are the things that you need to do? How do you need to take, what are the things that you need to study for, right? How do you get your um, your stories done? Like, do you want to buy the MBA admissions course? Do you want to do one-on-one -on -one with Titan Our Services? Do you want to figure it out on your own? You need to identify that and push to meet the deadline for January because it's not impossible. It's actually very, very possible and you can do it. Okay. All right. So this is the end of our session. The meet and greet link is included in the chat. If you want to register, you want to meet us, please sign up. I'm, I'll be very excited to meet you all. If you join very late, the recording of the session will be sent out to you by Tuesday at the latest. And if you want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me, the link is also in the chat. And for the MB admissions course, the link is also in the chat. Um, so we will just copy and paste all of those links again for, I believe, for people that just joined. They don't see the um, links that have been there previously. Yeah, so I just included the links to the admissions course and the one-on-one. -on -one. So thank you, thank you so much for spending time on your Sunday evening. I know you all are really busy and you're going to work tomorrow, but I really appreciate you guys spending time. Enjoy the rest of your week. Have a fruitful week. And yeah, have fun. <laughs>